Welcome back, puzzlers, to the lucky die. Previously, Laffian solves a puzzle last minute, Ral apologises to his unseen servant, Squash wanders about food, and Sultana reminds us why she is Lord of the Doors. Even entering the Tomb of Obsolete Heroes requires a test of mental skills. So when inside the tomb itself in pursuit of Liana, it came as no surprise that a variety of challenges would be between them and their quest. Why was Sora's name mentioned at the entrance to the library? Why did the Fae agree to sit alone on a rock? And which shall our heroes choose? Treasure or love? I guess we're about to find out. Welcome back to the Lucky Die. The nymph throws her arms open and she says, Ah, great. Valued treasure. Now for the rest of you, treasure or love? Who are we loving? Well, she kind of like jumps off the top and lands like perfectly on the edge of the fountain on the pink side, very close to where you are, Laffian. And she kind of like kneels down in a way that she can look you directly in the eyes. Oh, she's that tall, huh? Oh, shit. Yeah, she's pretty she's pretty tall. Um like she was kind of like hunched down before, you know, like you can see that she was very tall when she landed. Um <laughs> you now appreciate how tall she is. Um she kind of looks at you um and she says, "Hmm. You are Lafian Dathridir and you share a heart with Kythea Athena." She's pretty good. You must be very fun at bars. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who's felt the heart of another, I can read. And what is it that you are alluding to bringing up these things? You see, I have been the guardian of this room for so many decades, or years, or millennia, or centuries. It's rather lonely. I just want to hear. Just tell me stories of love and happiness. Or you can throw a coin in the fountain. Would it be boring like that? Oh my god. Okay, first of all, (laughs) yes, that is such a good idea, and I think that Ral should tell you about his great romance with (laughs) Ama because it's super romantic and you'll love it. Also, and I'm going to go for laughing and go, is it bad? I kind of want to ask her to see what she what she sees in squash. <laughs> I'm not going to do it because I don't want to embarrass him, but I really want to ask. <laughs> no, I'm kind of in the same uh, boat there. I actually am kind of curious, but uh, uh. let me let me roll for her perception, shall I? Which one of you is squash? Uh, squash just kind of puts his hand up. <laughs> Uh, she kind of stands up and you realize she's like eight feet tall. <laughs> she gives a, a wink down to Laffin and Zoltana and she takes a couple of steps around to where Squash is and she almost has to like get in the water to look into Squash in the eye. And she kind of like gives half a smile and she says, you've not felt another heart, have you? Oh, that wasn't. I was Ooh. So- Ooh. Squash that wasn't looks, what I thought it was gonna be. Squash looks just <laughs> down on the ground, like super awkward. Just like, uh, I, I gave you treasure. Sultana, <laughs> do you want some popcorn? I've got some popcorn in my bag. <laughs> she kind of like leans forward and she says, "We each get one, maybe two. 
For some people, three or four. Just because you haven't yet doesn't mean you won't. And that doesn't mean it's because you're not unloved or unlovable. And it doesn't mean that you can't love. It just means that there are many things that it means. But it might mean that whoever it is isn't ready to love you yet. Or you pissed off their god. I, I uh, matter wise, I'm like, I don't need to answer her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this yeah, isn't about her. I, this is about I, the audience. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. Um, so please cut that. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> Squash just kind of awkwardly looks back at her and says. Um, if somebody chooses to be with me, that's their choice. Um, I'm, I'm just right now. I'm just trying to find my way in this world, um, and that doesn't. I'm, I, I'm, I'm still figuring this out. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Sometimes there isn't a heartbeat, and that's also fine. There isn't one for me. And I'm fine. I just, <sighs> as much as there isn't someone for me, doesn't mean that I don't want to hear about other people being happy. You might be one of those, but I think you are. I don't think you're quite like me. And that's okay. Well, you just got well, yes. Yeah. What? Well, Squash. what? Sick? And you kind of like, you see her like stand up and like back away a little. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got what? Well, now you are, are well. You're not sick anymore. Yeah. Uh, you guys helped me find the cure to the, to the, the, where autism. Yes, we did. Uh, because we love you. That's sick. Right. Okay. Does that count as love story? Anyway. Are you happy now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, it's not the same. Love, friendship is a different kind of love. In that I love to give you shit. <laughs> um, she she stands up um, tall and she turns to the the rest of you and she says, "Well, love or treasure, super easy." Zoltana, you want to go first? Or you want me to go first? All right. So once upon a time, uh, I was training to be a paladin. And I met this absolutely gorgeous woman, uh, beautiful, like inside and out, and and most importantly, like inside, because she was just like the most caring, amazing, giving woman I ever met, and I couldn't believe that she fell in love with me too, but uh, we fell and we fell hard, and uh, we got married, and. I didn't think I would ever have any kind of like love after my first big relationship. Um, I almost got married. That's not a love story. That's more of like an <laughs> I'm still looking for him so I can murder him story. So, um, but Odette oh, is my love story. Tragic. And she, we traveled and we helped people and she helped so many people. and. And then she died. I can. And then she wasn't dead. And I could. And then I couldn't save her the second time. And uh, now she's a goddess and we're goddesses together. And I'm still very in love with her. You see the nymph's face just like with every up her face like smiles and she gets brighter and brighter and every down her face like drops like, oh, no. And it's like that through the entire story. I'm and really bad at telling says, stories. <laughs> it's fine. Sultana's um, not a good storyteller. <laughs> <laughs> she smiles and she says, that's beautiful. And you deserve to be loved. I can see. I can see it in there. I can see all the love that she has for you. And it's so strong. Thank you. Thank you. For listening. Well... What about you two? Love or treasure? 
Rawl, you want to go first? Or do you want me to do? You know, flip a coin. If we flip the coin, it's it might just fountain. end up in the fountain. <laughs> I That's think true. That, I think that for dramatic story purposes, Rawl should go last because it's his quest. Mm. It's you lost the coin flip. 120 episodes of like. <laughs> it's because the coin ended up in the fountain, Rawl. It's gone. It's gone now. <laughs> Stuck to the side of the fountain. <laughs> it's doing that perpetual spinning on its side thing where it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> Magnetism. I guess I can go then. I mean, I guess it all started being in prison for 50 years being by yourself with nobody else other than just a strange voice in your head telling you how to harness your psionic powers. The, uh, I was with you right up to that point. Sorry. Um, how do I explain it? Uh, mental abilities, not spellcasting per se, more doing things with just the power of my mind. Somewhat irrelevant to the story at hand, but also somewhat okay, relevant. Sorry. sorry. Uh, fast forward to the day before our execution. We're all in prison. And I'm told that there is someone that might be able to help us and uh, to look for a new and unfamiliar face. And my first thought was the new lunch lady that I'd hired on at the prison. Ooh. Meeting her, she Ooh. seemed interesting, especially after she tried to read my thoughts, which I thought I was the only one capable of doing such things at that point. So it was rather... Rather curious to me meeting somebody else that could do things similar to my own. A little bit of uh, interaction and what I didn't realize at the time was uh, subconscious flirting. Uh, led to us not being dead because, you know, the apocalypse started, the blood raid and everything. I'm not sure how familiar mm, you I are heard. with world events. I, I heard. It sounded pretty bad. Oh, god awful. Although, I mean, it spared us from, uh, you know, the hangman's news, which is nice. And then I found her injured, and I healed her best as I could, and uh, we started talking when we were left in a room to have our fates decided, and she revealed that she was actually a tiefling from the continent of Kino across the ocean, and instead of being appalled like I imagine most of my people would, I actually found her very interesting. And that kept growing and we kept interacting and it led to us now just enjoying what time we have together and making plans for the future under the assumption that we will succeed in saving this uh existence as we know it and we're going to open a school together and think it'll be very fun adventure outside of what I've experienced so far. Oh, so cute. Not at all how I pictured my life if you'd asked me 50 years ago, but... Love doesn't work like that. A lot of things don't I work think like it's... that. <laughs> no, there are, there are plans, and then there's love. <laughs> oh, so cute. <laughs> and And you... Tall, dark, and handsome. <laughs> um, I'd go with tall, dark, and brooding. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we've been over this self-sabotaging. <laughs> <laughs> no, neo sabotage. <laughs> someone, someone really special came into my life. Um, at about the time that I was getting sick, learning how to deal with that. And she helped me out a lot and ended up saving my life. And uh, yeah, we were living fine before all this. Um, things were about as good as they could be. And... Um, then we, we kind of got brought into this in an unfortunate way. And she died. 
Uh, something to do with miracle and magic costs and stuff. Magic, I don't understand. She kind of has like half a smile and she looks like she's actually really studying you at the moment. But uh, it was, I guess, made better by the fact that Miracle could also give her back. And so now she's back. And um, I've set everything up, I think. Um, we kind of lost everything, but now we have a house while we're going to. And, um, yeah, I just want to fix all of this so that she can, you know, so that she is happy and I am less worried. And, uh, yeah. You have a very interesting tale. Thanks. I can Raw see this tale. on you. <laughs> <laughs> she smiles. I can see there's the mark of Merkel on you. Yeah. She kind of like gestures like, just kind of like to the, the nape of her neck and, and gestures to you. Must have been some conversation with the deity of death. Yeah, that was a different one, but um, yeah. They seem nice. S same person, different deal. Um, <laughs> yeah, they seemed nice, I guess. I just wish we weren't made to be brought into this like we were. You know, it's an unfortunate thing. It is. But I'm assuming you're here for a, a bigger purpose. We don't always get to choose our fates, even though we got to choose our fate. It happens sometimes. Strange. Well, thank you all for the stories. I really do appreciate it. It'll probably be some time before I see anyone again, so thank you. You all make interesting reads. No problem. Um, she kind of like lifts her hands and she then like she lifts her hands so that their palms up and then she closes her hands and you hear a click and the door that squash was looking at previously opens slightly ajar and she says as i thank you for all your wonderful stories and for not all just throwing coins in the fountain steady your mind when you walk through the next corridor and be careful not to get turned around in the next room. In a literal or metaphorical sense? In the literal sense. Ah. Not foreboding at all. Mm -mm, not at all. Well, I have to return to my vigil. And she kind of like stretches uh, her full height and she kind of like very quickly climbs to the top of the fountain and just settles down. I'm sorry, what was your name? Oh. Nashira. Nashira. Huh. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. You're most welcome. And if you find yourself in Bellum again, then feel free to stop by, say hello. One of the first things that hasn't tried to kill us, so that's a deal. <laughs> this may be a weird question, Lashira, but why are you yeah. here? Who put you here? Why don't you leave? So, many years or millennia or decades ago, the sentient races fought for freedom. But that Freedom comes with a price. We had to hold different jobs the golds were holding. We had to become Mother Nature and Father Time. We had to hold the portals together. We had to hold back the creep. There are many jobs that we have to take ourselves now. 
One of them is to stop the wrong people going down to where your friend Liana is so that they don't unleash what's down there. Why did Liana get through? Liana is meant to. These jobs that we hold, some people, they choose not to hold it forever and ever and ever or for an entire age, like I think the mother of time has done. But there are other people, father nature right now, they change frequently. And Liana's position here, her family, they decided to protect this side of the portal to stop the creep getting into the physical plane. And they change every other generation, so don't go mad. Well, um, good luck on your vigil, I guess. And thank you for your work. You're welcome. I think Squash leaves. She kind of shouts after Squash. You just need to give them time. It was definitely like a, a misstep in Squash's stride. Uh, he doesn't look <laughs> back, he doesn't say anything, he just keeps walking. <laughs> just keep a steady mind in the next area. And no turning around. And she settles again on the top of the fountain and becomes much like a rock, like a carved statue. And you barely notice she's a living being at all, or a dead being at all. We've dealt with worse. We're literally friends with the undead bear, so like, whatever. <laughs> uh, when we step into the whole room next next room, yeah, do we feel that magnetic pull? Like, is there like that little tug on my ring or like on my uh, like my monocle or some shit? <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Um, as soon as you kind of like cross the threshold, um, the door behind you basically closes when you're maybe half a step um, past it, all of you. And yeah, you don't feel any magnetic pull. You don't feel anything like that. You would assume it's safe at this point to put your armors back on and put your metal algae back on. Immediately, the, the bag is down on the floor. He flips it yeah. open and he's like, <laughs> okay, this is your Zoltana. That's your Zoltana. That's your Zoltana. You know what, Zoltana, do me a favor. <laughs> stick your hand in there. I'm not grabbing Cal. You, you do that. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably for the best. <laughs> Cal is like, in my ear going, how dare you put me in another dimension? What was <laughs> the that fuck, about? Mate? I'm like, oh, did you want to no. be stuck? Did you want to be stuck to the fucking? <laughs> oh, I fucking had her. Like, you know, good shit. <laughs> you taught me it with the afterlife. You put me in the stalking. And the sheer is just like, that's the word likes to murder. <laughs> <laughs> that's its one true love, murder. Break. <laughs> that may be what do you love dumb. murder that, this may be the most intense passion I have ever felt in my life what do you love so as as uh, as y'all are, are getting changed and reacclimatizing yourself with your, your metal items um, a corridor is almost identical to the one before the spines of the book on the left hand side however now hold a slightly different picture you see that there is a coffin, a sarcophagus that has been drawn on the spines. Above, you can see the ground, and below it, you can see clouds. What? Wait, what? No, that's it. That's all you see. The sarco that's okay, sarcophagus. Coffin. Mm -hmm. Yep. Ground is above it. Yep. Clouds under it. And clouds are below it, yes. If I look at it upside down, perspective-wise, does it make sense? Or does the coffin look like it's actually right side up, artistically? The coffin looks, yeah. So the coffin looks right side up. The background looks upside down. Okay, that actually gives me a lot of information. Okay, got it. Yeah. Um, straight ahead of you, um, it's a little bit of a further walk than the one you had before. Um, you can see an identical door to the one before has no handle. You can see that there is another statue head that has been carved into the wall right next to it. Well, um... What was it that she said? Um, keep your mind. What was the phrasing? Study your mind and don't get turned around. <laughs> Study your mind. 
is the first thing. And as soon as we get into the other room, Scotch is like, what was it? I can't, I kept freaking out. What was it? Oh my God. <laughs> Guys, I'm fucking freaking out. Uh, <laughs> I'm losing it. <laughs> What's my name? <laughs> Somebody say my name. <laughs> Steve? Pete. It's got to be Pete, right? Um, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna not be cruel, and I'm gonna make the assumption that all of you are waiting right by the door on um, the closest to the to the, the nymph side, mm-hmm. um, while you put your metal stuff on and not just charge down the corridor. Yes, no. just, uh, we're I waiting. Be kind the and not make twenty you minutes for Sultan to put it's on ten. It's ten minutes for full metal armor, I believe. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, and with assistance, it should take a lot less. Yeah, but nobody can turn around, so. You can t- you can face backwards. This isn't dark dice where you can't look backwards or be sent back to the uh, start. You said turned around. Going. I'm not turning around. <laughs> okay, well then that's your choice. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> I I got mocked relentlessly on dark dice for saying that <laughs> Sentry turned around. Oh yeah. So I'm yeah. Not I freaked doing... out. Um. Okay. So yeah, you'll put your your metal things back on. Um. What do you want to do now? Uh. I guess we approach the statue on the other side. There's nothing else in the you room, begin... right? Uh, there's... No, it's just the corridor. Yeah, no. It's just the books either side, um, with one drawing on one side, but the others are completely blank. Um, as you make a few steps forwards, you begin to hear a discordant melody that is slowly and quietly being whistled, and it gets louder and louder until it begins to echo in your mind. Could you all please make a wisdom saving throw? The DC is not easy. 20. 13. <laughs> no, Neil, it, it, no, so it would be a 2 plus 9, which is 11 plus 2 is 13, plus Sultana is 17. Ah, 17. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah uh, I rolled a 25 with Sultana's plus 4. Okay. I got a um, 27. Wait, 13 plus 10, 23 plus 4, 26. Yeah, 27. Yeah. Um, I was like, yeah, sounds about right. Um, You begin to hear this whistle, this melody, which sounds suspiciously like a whistled version of our theme tune now. Um, You hear this thing echoing in your mind. It gets louder and louder, and it just sends those shivers down all of your spines. But... Thanks to Zoltana's ragey presence, um, none of you are going to be forced to flee, but you still do take damage. Oh, damn. I don't like that. Each of you take nine psychic damage. Aha, I'm resistant. The one time it comes in play. (laughs) (laughs) I was just going to have, like, if you failed, you just keep running back into the nymph's room. (laughs) She's just sitting there like, I He's fucking told you. you. <laughs> Got turned around. I thought I warned you. But now but now we have our metal on. Oh, no. We get kicked back into the Oh, no. Straight <laughs> into She's the like, f- I'm sorry. Fountain. It's my duty now to claw out your eyes and drown you in a very shallow pool. Ooh. Thanks for the story, <laughs> Very shallow. <sucker. laughs> Uh, yeah. Thanks, thanks to Zoltana's ragey presence. Um, yeah, none of you fail the dissonant whispers because um, I can't do the whispery thing. We're all jamming out um, for our theme tune. <laughs> yeah, that's what's happening. Um, yeah, you can make your way along this corridor should you wish. Um, again, right ahead of you is a door without a handle, and you see the statue head that has been carved into the wall. Its teeth look exceptionally sharp. Yeah. So, you guys felt or heard that noise, right? Right, right. Catchy, too. <sighs> uh, I, I'd be happy if I never have to hear it again. Um <laughs> <laughs> has to take another wisdom saving throw. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, we're in such a fucking dumb mood. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is there another lever inside the the exceptionally sharp tooth mouth the statue thing? Yes. Uh, 
I was just brave enough to reach in and do it. Someone else is. T- <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Squash is gonna think to himself, uh-huh. what a wonderful world. I was fucking Squash. thinking that, god Squash. damn it. Squash could just reach in and grab it, I mean. So, Squash looks at it for a moment and then thinks to himself, uh, wait, I think I think I have a thing for this. Um, let me see. And Squash kind of looks at his uh, hand and like goes over a couple of uh, runes and then like, Oh, yeah, I I, th- I think I definitely should be able to do this one. And he's going to move his hands and mumble a couple of words in a rhythm and out floats a spectral hand that kind of like just mirrors his fingers and then just kind of moves out th- for, from his body. And uh, Squash is casting Mage Hand. Ral is not casting space, Mage Hand. I almost said your name for some reason. <laughs> I'm having a strong guys. <laughs> hmm. If your finesse of this magical hand can beat the dexterity save, then yes, you will be allowed to do this. Finesse? For, what does that mean? Basically, there is a dex save that you have to make to pull this handle. Yeah. And, like, this kind of is a magical thing. Okay. But I will allow you to bypass the the clause of activate magical items if you can beat the deck save. So just roll a basic d20. Uh, all right. Uh, d20. Boop. That's a 19. <laughs> I haven't rolled under 10 all day. What the fuck, guys? I haven't rolled under 15. Um, yeah, your your spectral mage hands looks, uh, looks suspiciously like your hand floats in past all of these kind of dagger sharp teeth grabs hold of the um lever inside the pulley and just yank it towards yourself and the door pops open is there a chomping of teeth nah not yet (laughs) why do i Uh, feel like this is like that fucking game with the alligator head where like you push the teeth down mm -hmm. and then it fucking snaps oh yeah 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 the crocker snap thing whatever it is Uh yeah Um, all right. Uh, yep. Squash is just gonna um, pull the spectro hand back into his hand. And it just kind of vanishes. And uh, is it... okay. That worked. Uh, I think that's we can a fun just... one. I can do that myself. It's good. <laughs> well, I'll let you do the next statue then. I'd bet. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Too 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 much young terminology there. <laughs> uh, yes, that that would be fine. Thank but, you. All right. So, the room you see before you, mm-hmm. um, it's a really big room. It's like a massive room. It's like a ginormous cave. How many dwarves? Um, fuck ton. Metric fuck oh. ton. Um, oh, God. You can't see to the edges of it, even with your dark vision bullshit that some of you have. You just can't see to the edge of it. Um, you can tell, however, that this cavern this cave um you know probably about 100 feet out from where all of you all are um you can see that there is this bright green jade sarcophagus you can see that there are two torches either side of it and they're both lit with this kind of orangey greeny color to it the kind of the ends of them flick with the green it's on a very small little like the rest of this like cave cavern area is really roughly hewn, but underneath a sarcophagus, it's obviously very flat. This was purposely set here. Cavern is about 60 feet high, something like that. What's on the floor? Like, what does the floor look like? Uh, the floor is a naturally formed cave floor. Underneath the, sarcoph- underneath the sarcophagus itself. Mm-hmm. Um just looks like a slab of granite. I have a thought, but I'm not sure how well it's going to work. But just my, my first instinct. Okay. The, the the torches there. Would it be possible for us to turn them upside down? Um, not without burning your hands. Unless they're magical and we're supposed to be simulating the fact that they're supposed to be ground above and then sky below sort of thing. It... Clearly, okay. this seems like the thing back from the portrait. Yeah. You see where my mind is going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I absolutely agree with the idea, but... Uh, different execution? And I, I don't have a different execution. I'm just scared to go in there. I don't want to fall to the ceiling. I have a question. I hopefully have yeah. an answer. <laughs> if this place is where dead people go, then who, what's in the coffin? I don't like that that's a valid question. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> I'm going to go I'm going to go ahead and actually I didn't think of this until you asked the question. This place is called the Tomb of Obsolete Heroes. So it might uh. be more symbolic to other people that sacrificed themselves during the the War of the Fates. War for the Fates, I guess is the more mm. the phrasing. Why don't we get a closer look? Uh V is there a name for that war? Um, not really so far as you know. Okay. Better. Like, a lot of things happened roughly 5,000 years ago from Lich Dragon rising to people securing their own fate yeah. to whatever the hell happened with the timekeepers. Like, a bunch of shit happened all at once. Okay, I'm going to call it War of the Fates. World War A. Okay, you... <laughs> World War A. Call it whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make this current one World War B? Mm-hmm. Or maybe this one is World War V. I <laughs> <laughs> wish they were called like the bliss, blissful sh- sh- eclipse because then it would be the World no. War BS. No, I need you all to stop. How do oh, I, wait, if it's, how, if it's World War V, sigh? is it World War V? <laughs> did that beleaguered well, sigh that? come through on my audio? <laughs> like I need yeah, to make sure yeah. that it did because yeah. I need everyone to know that's listening to this, that I am not a party to this <laughs> this time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, not as far as you know. Get a closer look, shall we? Okay. Um, sneaking up to the sarcophagus, um, you can see that there are lots of magical runes that have been carved into this. Um, Some of them are runes that are protective, that are transformative. You can see some of them that are simply just names, just many, many names written on here. Um, Yeah, that's all you really see just by rocking up to it. Do we want to do a Patreon dump asking the names? (laughs) What are the names? Some that really wouldn't... They wouldn't really make much sense. No. <laughs> Damn it, I gave you a good out, V. You could have done it. I know. I could have put in all hundreds uh, TLD patron names here, but that seems like a waste. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, let's... Um, I'm not going to turn around. Eyes, eyes, eyes straight forward. Head always straight forward. Uh-huh. Um, so, want to like try to turn the torch upside down? How are the torches set up? Um, they kind of have like three like feet. Then there's like a like a like a like a silver looking pillar, and then the candles. Uh, sorry, the the torches are just like set into a bracket on top of them. Um, I look behind us. Is the door no. st- still there? Oh, it's still there. It's just closed. Hmm. Roll. What? You can see a handle. It's, you can go back if you want. No, I was we going to go wrong. back and ask. No, we, we were literally told not to <laughs> turn back. That. I'm kidding. <laughs> sort of. There's still a door. <laughs> I swear to God, I will put like the fucking halter on your head if I have to. <laughs> You're like a fucking horse. Um, to answer your question, you could actually pick up the torches, just turn it around and put it back into the bracket. Um, it wouldn't fit comfortably or snugly like it currently is, but... You think it would probably stay? But it wouldn't... That would cause it to go out, wouldn't it? Mm, not necessarily. So it's not like a full dish bracket holder underneath. Like, it's the one, like, it's like a circle of metal, and then you drop the torch in it, and the fact the torch isn't, like, straight, it's curved, or, or sorry... Um, angled? Angle. Um, yeah, is it an angle? Cone-shaped? Um, it fits in like that. So... In theory, you could turn it upside down with a bit of a wiggling and a practice. You could get it to stay. 
Do you want to try? It just be difficult to do. Uh, yeah, we can try it, but it doesn't seem like it's meant to do that. So my assumption is uh, it's going to be moot. It's a good Probably. Thought, we wiggled around just to see if it does anything. Uh, I'm going to say that squash is probably the least likely to get burned. <laughs> uh, it's fiddly work, but yeah, you can kind of easily turn one upside down. Um you almost burn yourself once or twice. It's a little concerning that some of the edges of these flames are green, but you manage to turn one upside down, but nothing happens. Okay. Um, I'm just going to leave it. What is this place called? The Tomb of Obsolete Heroes. Squash, can you add, are you able to tell what the runes on this are? Oh. Um, your your rune work seems to be a bit better than uh, my previous studies, anyways. Let me give it a go. Um Squaws wants to try to study the rooms a little bit. Are they arcane in yeah, nature? Yeah, go ahead for an arcane. Yeah, you can go ahead for an arcane. All right. Uh, boop. That's a natural 20 for a 28. Well, lucky for you, it's a level 9. No, um, <laughs> you can tell that this is a level, like a very, very, very high level transmutation spell. Um. <sighs> You could tell that it has a very big um, catchment area. Okay. And you could tell that its focus, its like main focus, its main object is the lid of the sarcophagus. It has a large con- like catchment area, but the focus is the lid. Okay, um, this is a transmutation spell, runes, um, and its like area of effect is very big, like much bigger than it should be. Uh, and I think its anchor or its attachment is the lid itself. Should we take the lid off? It's the it's the gut instinct, and. Does the lid look like it's um, carved into the, the 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 coffin, or does it look like it's a separate piece? Oh, it's a separate piece. Okay, cool. I don't know where the fu- what the fuck I was playing. There was one D and D game where the sarcophagus and the lid was fused together, and if you broke it apart, you unleashed like a horde of undeads. It was like a it was ah, a mean trap. It's a seal. <laughs> it, it, it was like a trap. Like it, it was there just to taunt the players into fucking with it. I am uh, taking notes on that. Uh, Raul puts his hand out uh, <laughs> and rests it over the coffin like he's going to touch it. And then he looks back at y'all. I... Transmutation. <laughs> I mean, it's not evocation, so it's not going to explode. Uh, true. Although if it's transmutation, it might turn Raul into a chicken or something like that. Forever? Uh, quite possibly, if it's a high enough spell. I've I've heard of such things. Uh, squash is too light. Uh, I have an I I in the back of my head. I have this thought that maybe touching the lid will flip the gravity in the room. Uh, but it doesn't matter if Squash catches Ral or not. Ral still goes up, and Ral has featherfall, so he wouldn't even get hurt. So, <laughs> like, Squash is the least smart person to do that. Um. If no one's going to argue with him, he's going to break the first seal on doing a scary thing in this room and figuring it out and simply mm-hmm. touching the lid. He pulls his you hand down touch and touches the, the lid. lid. Where is everyone? Squash is by the rooms, like staring at them. Uh, yep, or- so you're right by the sarcophagus, yep. Laffian. <laughs> he probably took a step away. <laughs> So, super close to the, the thing. Uh, Zoltana, where are you at? Uh, probably somewhere. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's a question I don't have an answer for, because I didn't really think about it. <laughs> I'm in the room. Um, uh, probably, like, not by the sarcophagus. I'm gonna say you're still close enough. <laughs> that you know what? That's valid because I didn't think about where I was, so I will take it. Um. Uh. Okay. 
Um, in that case, Raoul, you put your hand out and the jade feels cold under your hands, as you would expect it to. You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> You're the worst thing. You're welcome. I very slowly give it a push to slide it Could you open. Make a strength check, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to be able to be the one to open the thing, y'all. I believe in you, Ralph. I have disadvantage. <laughs> we believe in you, Ralph. <laughs> it's a two. <laughs> Ralph. <laughs> oh, my God. No. Um, you, you push it and this. This jade sarcophagus lid is not moving, pal. <laughs> it's heavy. <laughs> you know, arguably, the lid of a sarcophagus is technically also a door. Well, I can't open the door then. Someone come lift the <clears throat> lid. Sorry, let me let me say it again. You know, arguably, a sarcophagus <laughs> lid is kind of like a door. Ah. Zoltana, Zoltana, that's your cue. I got, I, yeah, yeah, Stage cue. I got, Stage I, I understand what you're trying to do. <laughs> but you're also asking me to open a sarcophagus. Yeah, I, I am. I think Zoltana wants to touch the coffin. You know, have any like, better how, ideas. You know what's in sarcophagi? Sarcophagi. Normally dead you're, things, but we're in the land of the dead. Mummies balance. What? I'll promise to make her sure. <laughs> uh, um, I mean, yes, there might be one in there. I don't... Is that a problem? <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> Wait, so I ain't afraid of no, like a... no mummies. <laughs> so right. do you have is, like a This is on like you, Balance. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't coming to fucking grave rob. We're go, not grave robbing. I'm We're trying to figure out the puzzle. Off, I guess. <laughs> uh, could you make a strength check for me, Pelisotana? I'm just over here trying to have a fig Newton and enjoying myself, having a good time. The fuck did you get a fig Newton from, Balance? I brought them with me. I figured if we're going to hell, we might as well have snacks. Oh, you fig you uh, uh, I wasn't going to say it, but thank you. Oh, no. I was, that's a 20. Cool. Um, on a 20, you basically put your hands against it and you give it one good hard shove. All of you fly into the air 60 feet as reverse gravity hits you. Yeah. Um, I would like everybody to roll their own fall damage, please. Uh, so that's 66. Every time I roll, I roll ones and I can't cope with this anymore. Cope and seethe. <sighs> Just kind of rage in the corner. Woof. <laughs> that's what, oh, I, that's I sh- what I get for that fucking fig pun. Oh, <laughs> I sh- I shouldn't be laughing, man. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing. Ow. <laughs> also, to be fair, I am wearing. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Not as bad, but I believe, Raoul, you just yeah, everything flips upside down, and you just land on what would be the ceiling, which is now the floor, just a few moments after everybody else. <laughs> Look, you, Ralph. <Ralph. laughs> uh, how far is your um, slow fall? Is it 60 feet or 100? Use your reaction when you fall to reduce any falling damage you take by 80. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to hit 80 points of damage. So I not. think he still needs to roll. <laughs> what, how many, ro- no. how <laughs> many is the roll? 66. <laughs> The max of which is uh, the... 14, so not quite 80. <laughs> You're like... No, no, no. You yeah. rolled almost half my damage. You rolled <laughs> less than half of Sultana's damage. That was a... <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go for it. Sultana, what damage did you take? Uh, I got 29 damage. Ooh, Laffian, what damage did you take? 23. E. Uh, Squash, what did you get? 20. And Raoul. <laughs> Zero. Honestly, to the ceiling. <laughs> um, 
the jade sarcophagus lid has smashed into the floor next to you as well. And you look up and you can see 60 feet above you. You can see the sarcophagus. Um, you can see the lid obviously gone. You can see there is what looks like a ladder that goes from the underside into the darkness. What do you want to do? Oh, God, we got to go down in there. Uh, wait, where's this ladder? So 60 feet above you is the uh, the size of the sarcophagus. Uh-huh. And at the bottom of the sarcophagus is a ladder. Okay. You mean the top? Yes. So, so in the ceiling, there is a hole. And you can see in the hole in the ceiling, there is a ladder. <laughs> there's a hole in the ceiling at the bottom of the ocean. Yep. Um, okay. Um, I do not believe I have any ability to fly 60 feet in the air or what feels like 60 feet. Uh, I, I'm just assuming. It is definitely a minimum of 60 feet. Uh, I know Raul can do some wall running, but I don't know if he can like jump then to the ladder. That might be a dangerous move. Are there walls here? They're very uh, far yeah. out. Hmm. Yeah, pretty far out, though. I sent Teo off, so Teo's not here. You did. Um, Rob might be able to run up the walls to the floor ceiling. Send me, or please link your wall running abilities. I have an idea. Uh-oh. What is your idea? <laughs> How much water do we have? Send the magic hand upwards and then pour the water in one stream and I'll run up it. Oh my god. I, don't I think that is so it. fucking stupid. Oh, I love it. I love it. I am going to rule, Ralph. <laughs> you do not have enough water that. to create a completely steady stream for you to run up 60 feet. <laughs> Whoa. So what I'm hearing is uh, I'm a boring poo-poo head and let's not have fun this session. Remember when we were in if- <laughs> at the forge and I was like, put a bunch of lava in the bag. It'll be cool. And everyone was like, no, Raul, that's dumb. Well, who's dumb now? Hmm? <laughs> Who should put liquid in the bag? Us. Uh, no, you uh- weren't running up lava. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the big L is on us, Raul. You're right. We're the dummies. <laughs> Shoulda, woulda, coulda. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna put this out there. Don't we have like a thing that allows people to fly, Sultana? Like, put like squash on her back, and and we flew and attacked Dachin and backfired so fucking hard we almost died. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Good times. Can we do that again? Except not die this time. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I believe you have the feather, right? Uh, yeah. Squash is going to look towards Sultana and just like, hey, don't we have like a feather thing that we can use to fly or something? Didn't they already break that? No. No, you don't need Mm-mm. to break it to use it. To If you break it, you gain like the ability to fly for like days or something stupid. One day. In that case, I will use the feather. All right, perfect. Um, Yeah, you... Basically, have these big, beautiful wings sprout from your shoulders. Um, God, it looks so cool. You are able to fly. Yeah, you're able to fly once, once a day, which I think was a minute. So you have one minute to fly. Uh, okay. Um, I don't think I have a sixty foot rope, but uh, if you get me up there, I can at least just hang on the ladder. You can get the rest of them. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Through a series of manipulations, Sultana is strong enough to carry basically everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I'm a strong man. Yeah, it's, it's strong. Um, yeah, like it kind of like taxes you a little bit and it basically is the whole minute of your your flights. But yeah, you managed to get to a point where all four of you are kind of on this ladder going upwards. Um, yeah, nice, beautiful save. Um, you keep climbing. Mm-hmm. And then probably probably after about a minute or so of climbing, you feel like the gravity shift in your chest. Can everyone please make a dexterity saving throw oh or boy. a strength saving throw? Oh, boy. <laughs> Fucking what? Why are you rolling dexterity? 
You, just you have a choice, said... dexterity or strength. Yeah. Oh. Mouth. I only heard dexterity. Strength. Yeah, I'm going to go with the strength. There Thank you. you. <laughs> Don't forget that's, the, that's, uh, the that's aura. Much, but, uh, the aura of uh, yeah. nothing. The aura of nope. <laughs> nope. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, Lafian, what'd you get? Uh, 16 plus 5 plus 4. So four. 21, 25. Yeah. Cool. Raul, what'd you get? 23 plus the aura. So 26, 7, seven 27. <laughs> uh, squash, what'd you get? 34. Damn, son. Mm-hmm. Um, and Sultana, what did you get? Uh, 25 with all told. Fantastic. You all feel that sudden shift in your chest and either through holding on through sheer might and then writing yourself or just going with the flow and swinging around until you're upright again, you find yourselves upright on this ladder. You're no longer climbing up, you're climbing down. As the gravity writes itself. Somewhere. As you climb down. I hear Pirates of the Caribbean is <laughs> playing. <laughs> now up is down. Yeah, up is down and down is up. All right. As you climb down this ladder, at the very bottom, you turn and see pretty much a very similar corridor to the ones you've seen before, but this is like 180, 200, 210 feet long. It's it's a very long corridor. You can see that there are some images drawn on some of the book spines along this corridor. But they're a little too far out for most of you to see. There's no other light here than that which you bring yourselves or your own dark vision. At the very end, you see a door and you also see one of the grotesque um, statue faces carved into the wall next to it. Why does this hallway feel like a setup compared to the rest? Because it's spooky and dark and probably a setup. Yeah, I'm going to agree with that one. Why don't we proceed with a little bit of caution and maybe keep an eye out for some traps or anything like that? You know, I imagine people that don't have dark vision would probably hit the first uh, pressure plate, a tripwire that was laid out. You were, you said that in the next uh, scary face, you would be the one to uh, pull the lever. I did. I did. Let, yes. let the record show Aether has a shit-eating grin right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the obvious trapped corridor. <laughs> <laughs> I think Squash is going to take point. Um, I still have dark vision thanks to the Eye of Winter. And yep. I am going to lead the group in through the room, watching out for pressure plates or uh, trip wires or even fucking magical, f- uh, like, like, lasers. Areas. Yeah. <laughs> lasers. Mission Impossible music, cue that right there. <laughs> Only done with lutes and 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 other old instruments. Jesus, <laughs> I, I could only pull um, lutes out of my ass. <laughs> that is a big ass. Um, <laughs> 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 sorry, it's, it's almost three. It's three in the morning. I'm very tired. <laughs> All right, squash. Make a perception roll for me, please. This is going to be real tough. How oh, is it now? Yeah. Well, good thing. I've only been rolling. Ah. Oh. All right. Uh, thanks to reliable pal- talent, I rolled a 24. Could I be assisting? Since it was my suggestion in the first place. He did suggest the pressure plate. I stole that. Literally. Literally stole it. <gasps> Copyright. You did not steal it. Um, sure. Go ahead. I was like, oh, 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 ah, shit. Well, it's How? Right fuck? Reliable How? Talent. How? Reliable talent. It rolls every dice roll under 10 up to 10, unless it's a one. And then his block kicks in because halfling. So I rolled. Right, what'd you get? I rolled a three that turned into a 24 and a seven that turned into a 24. So I rolled a 24. All right, sweet. 24. <laughs> um, as you go along this corridor, you can see that the books pretty far in obviously have something drawn on them, but you need to get a little bit closer to it. Yep. You're probably one or two steps in when all of you are plunged into magical darkness. No. Oh. Can anybody see in magical darkness? I do not believe you gave me that ability. 
Uh, actually, Aethar, you do have blindsight. I can see ten feet in front of me. Yeah. Mm, mm. Don't you have tremor sight? It's basically tremor sight. I can feel vibrations in the air. It's something like... So if something is stationary, you can't see it? Uh, You're like a velociraptor? Let me if let me let move, me read. You the, can't see it. Let me <laughs> read the blind side <laughs> thing real quick. I'll, I'll get back to you. I rolled an acid roll, but it was okay. Good. Okay, well that's good, Raoul. You you didn't just start snotting all over everyone in the darkness. Not like oh. we would see uh, it. No blind sense. If you are able to hear, you are aware of the yeah. hi- you are aware of the location of any hidden or invisible creature. Yeah. So, so no, you can't suddenly see the things written on the walls. No, but I. Um, I'm gonna disagree with that reading. If you're okay. able to hear, you're uh, you're aware of the location of any hidden or invisible creature within ten feet of you. I'm assuming they are not excluding the terrain. Yeah. So if it was like a like a like a it's like a, a, a room hidden behind the bookcases, then yes, I would agree. Uh, but there aren't. No. Uh, like if there's like a like a hidden area, then you'd know about that. Or if there was a uh, an invisible creature standing in front of you, you'd know about that. I, I think I, I think, but a painting on a wall. I, I, no, no, he's not arguing for that. He's arguing for no. at least being able to see where we're going. I, I'm arguing. Oh, yeah, you, you have to figure out where you're going. I'm now. arguing sonar sight. Yeah, it, like bat sight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can screech at the like wall. Like daredevil. I, right? I, I go, <laughs> and the, I can see where the wall is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you'll be able to see that, but you won't be able to like see pictures on the wall. Oh like, no, no, no! Um, I, I can't see yeah. like pigments, pigments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pigments, colors, anything like that. I'll allow it only if while V is describing the thing, you have to continuously make that sound over. <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> Can I rather make the top sound from? Uh... <laughs> no, you, already, you already made the sound. It's set in stone. <laughs> oh fuck. All right. Um, yeah, I would argue that you'll be able to like see where you're going. Yes. You know where the walls are. Yes. You know where the floor is. Yes. You know what's on the ceiling within ten feet. You won't be able to see like anything written on the wall. No, I, I could not um, read a book. I would be aware there are pages. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Um, yeah, you can absolutely do that. Um, okay. In the darkness. This is the pickle we find ourselves in. Wait, does your monocle not give you, like, mm, true sight or something? No, the monocle is just I can see invisible. Ah! Bum hug. Humbug. Bum Oh, God. (laughs) That was not intentional! Don't mock me! (laughs) I just want a t-shirt that says bum hug on it now. You're absolutely the worst. Get yours now. <laughs> All right. Sorry. I you promise. make your way through this corridor in absolute darkness. You can't see anything at all. Squash with your somewhat weird bat sonar like vision. <laughs> you can tell that the floor doesn't really change at all. Um, You can tell that the walls are again just rows and rows and rows of these books and they don't appear to change at all. Um, It's a slow process. You're probably 30, 40, 50 feet in, something like that. Yeah. When you'll begin to hear whispers in kind of like to the sides of you. Begin to hear names being called out. All of your names, one after another. Laffian, Raoul, Squash, Sultana, you begin to hear them whisper directly at you. Ral, we know what you did. Laffian, murderer. Sultana, oh. Squash. My, my, my. Doesn't bother me. I came to terms with that uh, issue long ago. Can you can't shame you? me, voices. Please make a wisdom saving throw. Can't shame me. I already shame myself. <laughs> <laughs> no one hates me more than I do. <laughs> Woof. No, I just love yeah. myself too much. Please. Wisdom saving throw? Yep. Yes, please. With the aura, it's not as bad. Oh, wait, this is uh, dis- right. Dissonant Whispers, isn't it? Again. 
Kind of, but not the same. Akin. Akin, yeah. Close cousins. Harmonious uh, whispers. <laughs> Discordant insults. No. Uh, <sighs> yes. Um, unvicious mockery. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. You suck! In good insulting truths. humiliation. <laughs> yes, uh, insulting humiliation. Um, if I ever play a wizard, we'll make that. of dissonant whispers and vicious mockery. Um, okay, uh, Zoltana, what did you get? 14, all told. Okay, uh, Raul, what did you get? 30. 30, holy shit. Um, Squash, what did you get? 17, with the uh, bonus. And Lafian, what did you get? 27. My mind is an enigma. Mind is... You're all at peace. Um, Sultana, yours is basically close as damn as the swearing, so fuck it. Um, You hear these voices calling out to you, but as you said, most of you have come to term with some of the shitty things that you have done in your past. Um, And each of the people that call out to you, you see, hear the voices changing and shifting to voices that you recognize, people from your past, but it all just kind of flows off your back like water you're ready to face what's coming Sultana nearby just like ah fuck it nah um helps a lot 50 years of meditation helps a lot um you manage to make it through this darkness without really any damage or anyone breaking into your mind whatsoever as you hit the end of the darkness the end of this corridor the magical darkness behind you you step out of it You look back and it's still there. You can't see what's in there at the moment. But right ahead of you, you see the door. And you see that there is the statue face that has been carved into the wall. Right, so we agreed my turn then, yes. Uh, yes. All right, I'll give it a go then. Uh, Does a little finger waggle, pops up the mystic hand and tries to do the same thing. Your mystic hand goes into the mouth and disappears. Oh. Ah. Uh. Ross going to roll to jump scare you. As if your <laughs> plan went wrong. <laughs> hey, your plan went wrong. You didn't do it. Oh, wait. It didn't happen? Shit. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll to scare you now. <laughs> I'm going to punch you in the fucking snoot. <laughs> I might only do one damage, but I'll boop your snoot, damn it. That's my roll to that's my roll to scare you. <laughs> yeah, but everyone's in the range of Sultana. You're out of reaper to affect no one. <laughs> <laughs> you just go, woo! It's just like, well, what are you doing? This is not Bro, the time. Come on, mate. <laughs> this is uh Archer saving those we're talking about on my Evan Chan. <laughs> we're immune, Neil. <laughs> We're mean, mean. No. Um, yeah, as your mystic hand goes into this mouth, it completely disappears. You feel like a sudden coldness all around you as you just kind of feel that, I guess, psychic reverberation. Oh. Um, and Raoul turns into Spectre version of Raoul, surprising nobody whatsoever. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Raoul? Um, and you're left with a door and the statue head. Hi everyone, it's V here. Thank you so much for listening to our episodes and for listening to the last 200 plus episodes. Uh, Thank you all so very, very much. Uh, I want to start out by saying thank you to our newest patron, Daniel Tackett. Thank you so much. You keep the lights on around here and we very, very much appreciate that. I also want to say thank you to um, FX Reaper XS for the name Nashira. Thank you very much. Appreciate everybody adding names into the Not A Pete Fund, which includes places, plants, <laughs> animals, people, the whole, the whole shebang. So thank you all so much and thank you so much, uh, Reaper. I'm also going to use this section to add a tiny bit of news, and that is if you head on over to our Patreon, our Blighthouse Patreon, you'll find links to it in the show notes, you'll be able to find TLD in its entirety as an ad-free version, which is very exciting, and it's going to take a lot of work, or has taken a lot of work, depending when this episode comes out, that Arch and I would have cracked through in getting those up on the Patreon. So, yep, if you want to listen to TLD ad-free, one door on the Patreon, go over and give it a listen and uh, give it a try out if you prefer your episodes that way. 
You're about to hear a promotion for Ghosts on a Train, which uses the Blades in the Dark Forge in the Dark system. I love that system. It's really fun, and the setting is amazing, and they tell an amazing story. They're an actual play like ours, so hang about and listen to their promo. Bye! We interrupt this program to inform you about the new radio drama, officially sanctioned by the Immortal Emperor himself, Ghosts on a Train. Ghosts on a Train is all about the pride of Duskwall and the courageous but eccentric line bulls that keep our railways safe. Let's hear from the bulls now. Andrew Anderson, badge named Dunville. <laughs> the best thing about being a line bull is definitely the train. Back at the orphanage, I shared my room with 20 people, and now I only share it with three. Well, plus the food's way better. Plus there's a hot tub, and I swear that someday... Yeah, we only have so much time. Adric, a.k.a. Drix, badge named Colburn. Close calls, huh? <laughs> that was a wild one, but, uh, you know what cowboy never rodeos entails. Oh, that's unhelpful. Pippin Pip McKeel. Badge name McKeel. Well, I think it's best to bear the train. It's an unintelligible mumblings of a drunkard. Ah, well, listen to Ghosts on a Train, a Ghost Lines actual play, releasing every other Thursday on a podcatcher near you. 